there will always be something that stands in your way. Some wall or resistance is going to make you want to stop. But the thing to remember is, the choice is entirely up to you. You can stop. Or will you keep going? do this. I can do this. I can do this. What's up guys? So it's race day tomorrow and I'm getting all my stuff ready to go, packed up, all my sustainment, all my nutrition, my hydration stuff, all my equipment, everything that I'm going to need to do to be able to run this 50 miles tomorrow successfully. And I'm doing my very best to organize everything because I know there's going to be points uh, during this run where I'm just completely out of it and I don't want to have to be searching for stuff. I just want to know where it is, grab it, get it down and go, right? Move out. And so I'm starting to organize all my stuff. I've got my complex car blowout right here, some flip bars, some honey stingers. I've got my quick acting cars, my simple cars right here. Um, some cliff energy shots, some of them with caffeine, some of them with not. I've got some block chews. Uh, I've got my Enduralites Extreme tablets, okay. I've got my Mew Energy for emergency purposes, my Noon tablets, or none, I still don't know how to say that. Plenty of hydration materials. I've got a whole pack of uh, Downrange Supplement Nightline Go um, hydration and recovery mixes. I should be good to go as far as uh, nutrition and hydration and electrolyte supplementation goes. Also got my uh, first aid kit, right? So I've got my my second skin dressings to help me with blister care. I've got Advil to help with headaches or if I roll my ankle or, or fall and scrape up my hand or something, whatever I need pain for, emergency situations only. Same with the uh, sports tape. If I roll an ankle and I can keep going through, I got sports tape. I don't advocate, you know, pushing through injuries, but for me personally, if I get something that I can keep working through to finish this race, you know, I have stuff to be able to bandage it up and, and move out, keep going. I also got my body glide, all right, so that'll help with any uh, rubbing, any friction, any rashes. It's also going to help me stave off any uh, monkey butt that I might, <laughs> I might get if I wasn't using it. So I'm bringing two uh, running packs with me. I've got my, my waist pack, all right, with my small water bottles. It's a little more low profile, a little light, lighter weight. Still has a little bit of uh, stowage on the back where I can put my cell phone and like a little snack or something. But I'm sure there will be one point where I, I want to be low profile and just not have as much on me, so I have this. And then I also have my trusty uh, runner's vest, all right? This is the Osprey Duro 6. All right, yeah, I use this for the 50K, and I plan on doing the same for this one. It's, it's starting to get a little dirty. I've used it for hikes as well. But I'm definitely going to be running with this bad boy so I can have a camel back on my back and so that I can have the uh, easy access to uh, all the things that I want to be able to get to on my front. And 
so I can bring my GoPro along and make sure that I get really good footage for you guys, all right? Or at least do the very best I possibly can. Got my Saucony running socks that I've been using for a long time, used, ready to go. Got a runner's hat, which I don't normally wear, but I feel like since tomorrow is gonna be a super sunny day out here in Hawaii, I'm gonna want something like this. It'll also help keep the uh, sweat out of my eyes. So I'll, I feel like I'm gonna wear this tomorrow and then I'm just never gonna wanna leave home without it after I wear it. Got some sunscreen, all right, because again, gonna be out there in the sun. Don't I'm gonna be putting this on pretty regularly to make sure I don't get too sunburned out there. Got some baby wipes just in case, you know, <laughs> just in case worst case scenario and I just gotta take a poop on the side of the road. I got some baby wipes. And then this is also gonna help me with uh, as I'm sweating so much, I feel like the salt build up, build up on the, the skin is going to be pretty dramatic. So I'll wipe that off as I go, as I feel needed, so I don't get any like rashes and stuff like that. So this is, this is going to help me out a lot. I'm sure I'll use this whole pack while I'm out there, or at least half of it. And then of course I got my Saucony Endorphin Shift 2s, all right? I managed to get about 50 miles in on them. Um, I got them last second, like less than two weeks ago. Got them in the mail, but I have put about 50 miles on these shoes. They should be good and well. <laughs> broken in um, they feel pretty good so I'm, I'm not too worried about it oh and by the way i just made a whole video on this entire loadout i'll put it right here that goes into more of why i picked every individual thing but you know if you want to watch that video it's right here so i'm going to be running the hawaii kai extreme <laughs> run tomorrow all right and this run gives you free range on the distance that you are wanting to run in order to challenge yourself and I chose to go with the uh, 50 mile option because this is a milestone that I need to hit on my way to eventually uh, running 100 miles. Okay, that's the end goal after all this. I wanna be able to run a 100 mile ultra marathon within 24 hours. So this is a major milestone for me. This will be the furthest that I've ever run uh, in, in one go. I have done a 50 mile ruck march before and, and, and that was rough, uh, but this is gonna be a lot different. You know, I'm moving a lot faster. The conditions are a lot different. You know, I mean, it, it's beautiful out here. Don't get me wrong, but it's hot and it's sunny and there is a lot of sweating involved when you run out here. The route that I'm running um, as part of this run is a nine mile out and back. Uh, so I'll have to do it 5.5 times, something like that in order to get to 50 miles. Uh, but I'll be able to use my car as an aid station, which is really cool. So all that stuff that I just showed you, um, I'll be able to stage that in my vehicle so I don't have to run with all of it the entire time. And so I can take breaks at my, at my car, you know, stuff like that. So that's pretty convenient. It's also gonna be entirely on road. And I've went out and scouted out the area and there will be some rolling hills. And actually there's, there's one specific hill that they call, I think it was heart attack hill. It was either heart attack hill or a heartbreak hill. And they say it's really steep incline and that's, that's where they get the extreme portion of the uh, race name from, that one specific hill. So hopefully, I don't think I saw it when I was out there, but hopefully it's not too bad because I'm not like planning for this crazy hill that I have to run, you know, a bunch of times. <laughs> so I wanna get this race done in 10 hours or less, which means if I'm breaking down the math correctly and doing quick beer math, I would need to maintain a 12 minute mile per mile for 50 miles. And that sounds pretty slow, but we also have to take into account breaks, uh, you know, small little rest periods, stuff like that. So I figure if I could at least maintain somewhere in between a 10 or 11 minute mile with running, and that will give me a minute for every mile that I run for rest. So that means for every five miles, I can rest for five minutes, every 10 miles, I can rest for 10 minutes, so on and so forth, you get it. I don't wanna to be too rigid with my rest planning because I just don't know how I'm gonna feel um, in the moment and I wanna be adaptable. But now that I know that basic math, I can kind of have a good game plan on how I wanna work my rest and how I wanna work my pacing to make sure that I actually get done with this run in my goal time or better. So that's how fast I plan on running this. Another cool thing about this race is you can start whenever you want because there's all these different race lengths and it's really, it's kind of uh, up to you when you wanna start your own time. And I was thinking about starting at like 7.30, but now I'm starting to think maybe more like 6.30 just so I can beat a little bit of the sun. A sun starts coming up around uh, 6 to 6.30 around here. So I think that might be a good time to start. 
I might even show up a little earlier, I'm not quite sure yet. I wanna make sure that when I wake up tomorrow, I'm able to do like my, my basic daily routine, you know, wake up, eat some breakfast, kind of relax for a minute, you know, have a poop, so that I'm as most mentally and physically prepared as possible and motivated to go out there and, and do this run, you know what I mean? So hopefully I can get out there by at least 6.30, but if it's a little earlier, uh, you know, so be it. But for now, I gotta make some dinner. Pancakes, baby. I'm making it a thing now, man. So when I did the 50K, I had uh, IHOP pancakes <laughs> prior the prior night before I went out there and did the run. And I was actually gonna keep that going because um, there's an IHOP right down the street from me. But dude, where I'm at right now, uh, they were, it was like $25 for some pancakes and I just couldn't, I couldn't do it. I was like, I have pancake mix at home. I'll just make myself some pancakes. But that's okay. We're gonna, we're gonna keep the tradition alive. We're just gonna make our own pancakes at home. You know, it's, it's super important that you show up to the run ready to go with tons of energy. Um, and what I think is really important is making sure that you show up with uh, plenty of complex carbs in your system. And, you know, those are the carbs that are slower to break down and they'll give you a more sustainable uh, type of energy. And they'll, they'll just be in your system for longer, okay? So things like pancakes, um, spaghetti, rice, breads, Things like that are, are good ideas to get into your system, not even just the night before, but days before uh, you actually go out on your, your run or your race. Just to make sure that it's in your system and ready to go on race day. Pretty cool view out there, huh? That's where I'll be running. <laughs> Could you imagine if I just dropped my uh, camera? <laughs> I'd definitely put a damper on things. Dang, man. Brick one. I'm gonna need my salts. That's a pre-raised meal right there. Nothing fancy, but it'll get the job done. I'm gonna eat this, I'm gonna try to relax and calm the uh, the pre the pre race nerves for the night so that I can make sure I'm well rested and wake up at a pretty decent time drink my coffee eat my breakfast I won't lie um, I'm not nervous I'm not worried uh, maybe anxious is the right word but like I'm, I'm excited you know I'm really excited for tomorrow I can't wait to do it and uh, you know prove to myself that I'm actually able to accomplish this goal. Um, and accomplish this milestone because really in reality this is only half of the actual goal that I'm trying to reach right so I should definitely be able to do this that's why I just keep telling myself and I'm sure I'm gonna have to tell myself that multiple times tomorrow <laughs> that's okay we're not gonna stress about it now for now I'm just gonna enjoy this fine meal that I've made for myself uh, to prep me for the race tomorrow and with that being said see you guys in the morning Good morning. So I woke up um, at about 4.30, all right? The alarm went off. I decided to wake up at about 4.30 today. That would give me plenty of time to wake up, um, you know, have a little breakfast, drink my coffee, get myself ready and just do my routines so that I'm more than ready to actually show up out there and I'm not doing anything that's way too off from the norm. So the pre 50 mile or breakfast, all right? This is what it looks like. <laughs> Jam and peanut butter toast. And marmalade on this one. <laughs> 
And we also got some uh, milk, and of course we got some coffee. All right, and so this is something that, you know, this looks very similar to something I would normally eat on a normal day. It's not very much different. Um, this one's just, you know, heavy on the carbs, and I just lathered on the peanut butter because that's really just gonna help me with that uh, sustained energy while I'm out there today. So it's a good preload meal. It's about a 30 minute drive, so I'm really trying to get out there at about no later than six o'clock. We'll see, but that's what we're shooting for. So I'm gonna eat this, I'm gonna brush my teeth, I'm gonna do all my last minute uh, checks and grab all my gear, and we're gonna head out to the race. Uh, 50 miles, hopefully. Okay. So, it's okay. If I put it down, I have to do it. <laughs> the park. Okay. You're gonna run down to the high. So path. the hill you come in from the west is that is that that's gotta be the hill, right? Big intersection. Go yeah. Over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I saw some people running Pretty with vests, yeah. so I was like, this has gotta be the hill. I mean, yeah. this, this looks like it'd be crappy to run on, so that's gotta be it. Yeah. And then, um, and there's two aid stations. There's one here, and then. Um, there's one going over the hill. Okay. There's one in the back, and then. Yeah, oh, so there's like three of them. Oh, okay. So that's yeah. Alright, cool. Is that, is that everything? Yeah. Alright, cool. And I'll see yeah. you guys in 50 miles. I'll see you guys in like 10 hours. Alright, so we're officially all checked in. I'm just getting my last minute uh, stretches in. There's no like official gunshot or anything like that. Everybody just kind of takes off um, whenever they're ready. So you can show up at different times. You go in, you do your check-in, you tell them how far you're going to go, and you execute. <laughs> that's pretty much how this goes. So I just got my brief on the route. It's a little confusing, but there should be some some arrows and stuff to send me on my way and i can also pull it up on the map if i'm not too sure and they also said at the end of the day um you know as long as i get the mileage and i'm tracking it myself so that's what i'll be doing i'll be tracking the mileage myself as well on strava just in case i take a wrong turn or something like that So I think I'll bring these three things with me and I'll down one of these every three miles. All right, that's how we're gonna start this off. I'm gonna keep it pretty conservative, uh, you know, keeping around a 10 minute mile pace throughout the entire event. And if I wanna get this done within 10 hours, I can keep a 10 minute mile pace. And as long as I'm doing that, I'll have myself two minutes of rest per mile that I can, that I can utilize and however I see fit. And uh, that's how I'm going to start, and we'll see how that feels for the first lap. All right, here we go. Hey, one mile down already. So much for 10 minute miles, right? Only gotta do that 50 more times. Too easy. Not even two miles in, and I'm already starting to sweat. All right, so this got done with about almost a mile of 15% grade incline. And I'm pretty sure this is what they're talking about when they mention Heartbreak Hill. See how it drops off right there? I mean, that's a good 45% right there for at least a quarter mile. <laughs> yeah, so that's gonna suck coming back up. 
even going down that steep it's kind of hard on the knees so i can i can see why they're calling it the extreme <clears throat> that's gonna suck it sucks because i'm not really sure if i'm on the right trail or not i think i'm good all right i think that's a good sign right <laughs> should be good first aid station <laughs> That's what you get, <laughs> some water. <laughs> I think that's awesome. Good thing I brought my own stuff, right? So we're at it just about three miles with that aid station. And so I'm gonna go ahead and take a gel right now. But it dodge traffic too. <laughs> Extreme. Way littering out here. All right, so first sustainment piece down. Anytime you take in a little bit of food, you wanna make sure you're taking in a little bit of water to go along with it. Because eating and digesting actually burns calories and does use fluids in the body. So you wanna replace that as you eat. All right, first, first round going back up the hill, Heartbreak Hill. going up. I can see myself walking this a couple times during this 50 miler. We'll see though. I'm going to give it my all. It's all I can't anymore as far as running goes. Alright. Definitely a solid somewhere in between a quarter and a half mile of just 45% incline. <laughs> and I'm already feeling I'm starting to sweat. I think it would be better for me to just, you know, kind of take it easy on the first half. And then when it really starts getting steep, just before the corner here, I'll just walk it out. And that'll give me a chance to kind of stretch out my legs a little bit because I've been running the whole time, coming up on nine miles. This will give me a chance to kind of catch my breath, stretch out and maintain myself appropriately so I can actually get all this done. <laughs> that's, uh, that's one of the hard things sometimes, is, you know, bringing yourself down, you know. These runs can be a really humbling experience and uh, you know, sometimes we just want to go, go, go and crush it, crush it, crush it, you know? But sometimes to crush it, you gotta give yourself a little bit of a break so that you can keep going and actually finish. That's something hard for me to deal with. Sometimes I, I struggle with that, bringing myself down and uh, not going 110% all the time, or at least knowing uh, when it's appropriate to go a little easier on yourself, you know? Sometimes you gotta give yourself a little break so that you can keep going later. It can't always, always be 110%. You know, like right now, if I go too hard, too fast, and I'm not conservative enough, I'm not gonna have enough energy on the back end of this. So I have to I have to be careful. I have to pay attention. I have to listen to what my body's telling me, translate that, and perform accordingly. So this is good. I've been running about an 8.30-ish pace total. Uh, I'm at eight miles right now. I've been walking for a few minutes, and now I'm at a nine minute pace all right still way below the 10 minute pace that i was trying to keep and that's with a little bit of walking so i'm doing i'm doing just fine doing great it's okay to strut it out a little bit especially on a 45 percent grade i know it's hard to see that with the camera i, I know it but it's there I, i'm telling you <laughs> all right we're over the hill now we'll get after it again why I love Hawaii right here it's all about the aloha man <laughs> all right lap one we're at a nine minute mile pace not too bad we're kicking ass we're gonna resupply take a little bit of a break make sure we're topped off on water and then we'll get back at it so far so good not too bad of a route definitely um rolling hills and that heartbreak hill is no joke i'll definitely be walking that for the majority of it at least half of it um for every lap just to make sure i don't burn myself out too fast i'm definitely sweating out here so i'm also going to take a uh, noon hydration tablet with a little bit of caffeine and i'm going to put some sunscreen on because the sun's starting to come out i can already feel it beating down on me the last thing i want is a sunburn
it was working its magic. Probably should have had this ready. That's a that's a new uh, lesson learned right there. Should have had this already going so that it was ready to go when I got back. Save me a couple minutes. Can't be getting burned out here, man. The sun in Hawaii is no joke. All right, so we just hit an average pace of 10. That means I've been resting for about 10 minutes now, which is good. That's what, that's what we're trying to achieve, but I'm still way above time um, because in order to make 10 hours, I'd be at a 12 minute pace right now. So I'm still banking like a good 18 minutes right now off the bat. Okay, All right, we're gonna grab another gel, another honey stinger, and a nut butter bar this time. All right, that's enough screwing around. Let's get after it. Back on Heartbreak Hill. <sighs> Definitely managed to slow down a little bit, maintaining a 10 minute mile. That was the goal in the first place, so that's good. <sighs> so not even two laps in, I've got 5.5 total I gotta do. Not even two laps in. And my wife calls me, she's on the way to the beach. It's like a two hour trip from where we live. She's on the way to the beach with the kids and she gets a flat tire just before getting to the beach. She called She called our insurance and all that. They're giving her a hard time. Called the dealership where we're supposed to have roadside assistance. They're giving her a hard time. You know, that's just the way things go sometimes. So she called me for some help. Don't worry, she should be getting helped out, but isn't that how it goes sometimes though? Damn. So we're both, so me and the wife are going through our own set of challenges today. But she's a strong lady. Like she's got it, she'll, she's got it all figured out. She's just keeping me informed. And uh, you know, she'll be good to go, but you know, just one more thing to think about, I guess. Waiting on her to call me back and let me know everything's okay. I expect that like within the next few minutes. <sighs> it's definitely getting hot. I kind of wish I would have came out a little earlier, to be honest, because it's definitely getting hot. I think I'm going to downgrade a little bit at the turnaround up here. Hello? No, what's up? Yeah. How are you gonna get there? How are you gonna get there? No, 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 no. No, that's not right. That's not right. All right. So we're downgrading. Wife has to go to Walmart, some Walmart. She had to get a repair kit on her tire. Now she has to go to some Walmart in some city she doesn't know to try and uh, figure her car out. Poor, poor lady. About 18 miles in, about a 10 to 11 minute mile pace including brakes. I just dropped a uh, nine line go in here for hydration. Gone through about two liters of water so far. There's my pace, this is with my brake right now. Just about to step off again. Uh, let's go. Twenty-six point three miles in. It's turning into a struggle. I'll be honest with you guys. Cramping up in the uh, in the calves. It's just it's just so hot. I'm sweating like crazy. It's really hard to keep up with the hydration piece, man. But I'm doing the best of my abilities to keep cool, maintain my salt, maintain my water, maintain my nutrition. It's gonna be a struggle to 50, man. I'll tell you, I'll be honest with you guys. It's gonna hurt, but we're gonna do it. Maintaining about a 11 minute pace average just with brakes and everything. Um, I don't, I think it will definitely be slower than that once I'm done, because I'm gonna have to walk it out uh, sometimes. There's just no way around that. I already know. Just with the hills and the terrain and just the cramping, like I'm just gonna have to walk it out sometimes, but I'm getting this done no matter what. I don't give a shit. I don't even care about the time anymore. 
I just want to get it done. That's what we're going to do. Definitely sucking. Time is no longer a priority for me. I'm not trying to kill myself out here. Uh, I just want to get it done. But I am like sweating like crazy, man. I've drank probably five liters or more of fluids. And it still doesn't seem to be enough. About 27 miles in, I've got two more laps to go and then some change. And I'll be honest right now, it's gonna suck. It's gonna hurt. At this point, the heat was really getting me. I definitely underestimated the heat. It had to have been somewhere around 85 to 90 degrees. Couple that with the humidity and the sun just beating down on me for the entire run. It was really starting to catch up. At this point, I've already run over a marathon's worth of mileage. And I won't lie, I wasn't entirely motivated at this point, if you can't tell. I was having a hard time shaking my mind that I was only about halfway done with this thing. All right, guys. Get the shit done, yeah? And I was starting to doubt my ability to actually finish this. I'm back at you guys after after another lap. I'm gonna take a break with the GoPro for a lap, all right? But sometimes the only way to get past the wall is to go straight through it. Doing okay, guys. I'm on my way back in this fourth lap. Sorry I sit you guys down, but I was just sucking, man. I'm starting to feel a little better. I've been dumping cold water on the uh, each station just to help cool myself down. We're almost done with the fourth lap. Over halfway done. I gotta keep this going, man. Just one more lap to go. more lap. <laughs> Nobody cares. Nobody cares. It's true. Nobody cares. Oh, oh there you go. Uh, cool. Alright guys. So I'm sitting at about this is my last uh, full lap that I have to do after this. I'm taking I'm taking myself a little bit of a break. I'm trying to get out of the sun. Not a whole lot of places to get out of the sun here but that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to get myself to just cool down a little bit, um, let the blood levels settle. I don't want to overheat. I'm at about uh, just under 37 miles right now. So I've got the one more nine miler to go. That'll bring me to 46. And then I just got a two mile out, two mile back. And I'll get my 50. And 36 is already the longest I've ever run, so <laughs> I'm feeling it for sure. Everything's feeling pretty good. Feet are holding up good. Legs are holding up good. You know, every now and then I get a little twinge of a cramp, but nothing too crazy. My shirt soaked the entire time. I, pour, I keep constantly pouring water on myself, cold water, um, and that's cooling me down. So that's keeping my core cool. And then I just run as much as I can. When the hills are a little too steep, I walk them out, and I just I'm just pushing it as hard as I can um, until I get to the finish line. That's that's my plan. It's only one more lap, so I can do this. I'm definitely gonna finish this. That's how I feel right now. It's gonna suck. It's gonna hurt. It's gonna be miserable, but I feel like I'm gonna get it done. My biggest lesson learned so far is that I definitely need to show up earlier to a race like this if I'm gonna be doing a race like in the summertime. You know, it's. <laughs> I did not do myself any favors coming here thinking I was going to be just fine, uh, you know, running in 85 degree weather with, with humidity, sun beating down on me um, in the middle of the day for, you know, going on 10 hours. So that was just not, that was just not good planning on my part. Definitely learned my lesson. Um, it's a hard lesson to learn, but we're, we're here learning it now. I'll also say Lay's original potato chips are now my new favorite for these long runs. Those things go down so good. They're just like perfect. They hit really well. And uh, the, the amount of salt and fats, like it just feels really good. You can feel it when you're eating it. So I'm definitely crushing those throughout this run. <laughs> that and a shit ton of Gatorade. Ugh. I'm gonna level with you guys. It's gonna be hard for me to carry the GoPro with the way I'm loaded out right now. I don't wanna put that vest back on. It's just too hot. And what I've got going on right now is perfect to actually finish this thing. So I, I'm gonna do my best to get some good shots for you but I'm not gonna be able to bring my handle 
uh, with me. I'm just gonna have to bring the, the uh, GoPro by itself and just carry it with my hand, okay? That's the only way I can think to do this. So just bear with me on this last lap. I'm definitely gonna take you with me. Oh my God. It's a miracle I haven't heat counted yet. All right, I feel like I have everything. Top off on water. 36.67, 13 and a half miles to go. Let's do it. And eight miles to go. It's still freaking hot. We can do this. Oh man. Woo. Oh man. Last time I gotta walk up this stupid ass hill. <sighs> 50 miles. <laughs> Just a, a, a cheeky 50 miles. This is a cheeky 50, no big deal. <sighs> hey, dude, well, that hurt. Oh, man. 23rd, yeah. 23rd. <laughs> Only ask me, man. I don't do numbers right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice. All right, good. Cover it? Oh, yeah. One more. Good job, man. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> oh! Uh, all right guys 50 miles 1151 minute per mile pace a little under 10 hours so we were able to meet our, our 10 hour goal barely i promised my wife i'd call her as soon as i was done so that's what we're gonna do because i love my wife oh gosh i can barely even operate the phone right now hi baby hi baby i'm sorry the service isn't great that's okay. I did it. That's okay. Oh. But you did it. I'm dying, man. I'm oh, dying. I'm sure you are. Uh, love you. I love you too. So, if you guys are <laughs> curious, she was able to get her tire fixed. It was a lot of running around in circles to make it happen, but she was able to get her tire fixed and she still was able to go to the beach with the kids. So, good news all around there. Here, I'm going to move out of the wind real quick. <sighs> Okay, that should be better. At least I'm out of the wind now. Got my certificate for uh, for all the hard work I did. <laughs> I love it, man. I'm gonna hang it up on the wall in the office at home. I love it. All in all, guys, uh, I think this was a great test for myself, even with the heat and the the hardships with dealing with the hydration piece. Like that was that just made me stronger in the end. You know what I mean? I've just learned more from it, and it's just gonna make me better. And this was a great milestone on my way to the 100 miler, okay? Now I know I can at least do half of 100 miles. <laughs> now I just have to keep training and uh, keep working hard and hit that next milestone of 100K and go from there. This is a learning experience. It takes a lot of hard work and it's, it's a lot of suffering. I won't lie to you. It's a lot of suffering, especially in the mind. The body hurts. Also, um, if you guys have been keeping track uh, with me over the past few months and you're wondering how my knee's doing it's actually doing just fine man uh held up great didn't have any issues there um honestly it's weird because it's like 
the more I use it, the better it feels, you know? So I think it's gonna keep holding up, hopefully. We're gonna keep putting it through the work that it needs to, to go through in order to get to these 100 miles. Besides that, guys, I'm pretty done here. Um, I think I'm gonna get myself a burger and a beer, and I'm gonna call it a night. <laughs> I hope seeing me run those 50 miles was motivating for you guys and it and it pushes you to go out there and accomplish your own goals. You know, that's really why I like to make these videos. I like to see you guys out there motivated and crushing it with whatever you're trying to do in your own lives. But now it's time for me to go home, get cleaned up, eat some dinner, drink a beer or two maybe. So right now I got nothing else for you and I'll see you on the next one.